And hello, everyone. This is Francis Rasmus, and I'm a meteorologist and weather observer from Mount Washington Observatory. And typically, when we do this sort of thing and we talk to you folks, we're talking about record cold up here on the summit or maybe some strong winds. But uh, a little bit different today. We're going to be talking about some record heat, uh, not only that's going to affect the uh, White Mountains region, but also the entirety of New England. And so I want to talk about the likelihood for records to be broken again on the summit. And so to get things started here, we'll take a look back at some some interesting history up here in terms of record warm temperatures. And so we don't have to go too, too far to find record heat on the summit in the month of June. Back in 1995, we had a record high temperature of 67 degrees. And that's going to be the number to beat tomorrow on Wednesday, on June 19th. We're expecting to potentially do that. We have a forecast high currently of 7 degrees. And so moving on to Thursday, June 20th, the number to beat is 64 degrees. That was set back in 2016 to 2020. Appears to be a pretty stubborn number up here for that date in June. Uh, we will likely exceed that as well. Thursday will be quite warm again, since we're expecting a large ridge of high pressure to build over the region. 21st of June, this upcoming Friday, 68 degrees, sit back in 1938. That one will be a little bit trickier. We've got a cold front moving through later Thursday and early Friday. That could put a little bit of a damper on the heat up here on the summit. And of course, the number we're always watching with these types of conditions is our all time station, record highs sit back in 2003, 1975. That was 72 degrees, so pretty impressive feat to get that warm up here uh, in elevation up here on the summit of Mount Washington. We're going to talk a little bit now about the dynamics of a ridge. You'll hear that word a lot. You'll hear the words heat dome, maybe even death ridge, uh, some more sensational titles. And really what a ridge is, is just an area of warmer air that's pushed up a constant pressure surface in the atmosphere. It's created a bulge in the atmosphere, if you will. And so the opposite is true with colder conditions. Uh, we'll see cooler, more dense air tends to stay a little bit closer to the surface. And so that will actually flex around continuous layers in the atmosphere that are the same height. So it will kind of move it around like a blanket or a permeable surface. So you can think of a ridge again where the air is expanded, and a trough is where the air is condensed a little bit more to get cooler. And, of course, we're talking about a ridge, and a really large ridge at that coming up in the next uh, couple of days. We're looking at a forecast of the 500 millibar height. This is the height of the atmosphere. It's about midway through the atmosphere, right around 18,000 feet or so. The part of the atmosphere that really matters to us as meteorologists. And so we're looking at the height of that, the forecasted height going into Wednesday here. You can see where I put that H. That's the center of the upper level high pressure system. You can see underneath that, there's some numbered values that are shaded. So you can see by Wednesday afternoon, tomorrow afternoon, we have a 597 decameter ridge stationed over much of the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. And so that's some hot air there. We'll see a really strong ridge again, typically see around 500 millibars or so, much higher than normal uh, with this particular event. Uh, what that looks like at the surface is, yeah, a lot of heat, a lot of humidity, especially in areas like the Merrimack Valley, Connecticut River Valley, where some more surface-based processes can actually help to heat things a little bit uh, more. So we'll see some of those temperatures ranging from the upper 90s Areas like Manchester and Concord, New Hampshire, uh, including areas as well of, say, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts, into inland Maine, as well areas like Augusta, upper 90s tomorrow. And then tomorrow night, when the sun finally goes down, there's not going to be a whole lot of relief. We'll see, you'll still see low temperatures fall back into the upper 60s and lower 70s for most of us. And we'll see that ridge continue overhead Thursday. So this is what it looks like uh, in terms of the forecast. It's going to move a little bit further south across the uh, southern United States, the southern portion of the Mid-Atlantic. But it's still going to be quite sprawling. We'll still see really high heights. Again, 594 decameters. That indicates some really hot air as well. And so, again, what does this look like at the surface for Thursday? Unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit hotter, maybe a couple of degrees warmer than Wednesday throughout most of the area. This is when we most likely will see some record high temperatures up here on the summit. But for the rest of us, uh, yeah, upper 90s, close to 100 degrees, especially in portions of, again, southern New Hampshire, uh, the Connecticut River Valley as well, showing up there, areas like Hartford, Springfield, Nashua, Manchester, and Concord. Uh, we even see some of those uh, high temperatures exceed uh, 95 degrees across portions of interior Maine. There's a slight chance that some of these areas also touch the 100 degree mark as well, so we'll keep a close eye on that for some of the records lower uh, in elevation. On Thursday night, again, not a whole lot of improvement here. Lower 70s, upper 60s, so uncomfortable sleeping weather. You want to keep your spaces nice and cool if you're able to. And if you're not, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of cooling centers opening up across New England. So just uh, look at your respective state to find out where those uh, exactly are. Uh, again, here's to you if you are uh, unable to cool yourself with air conditioning. And so Friday afternoon, 
We'll see that ridge start to really push further south. It's located over Tennessee. See a bit of a trough here, weak trough. That's where the cold fronts pass through and brought some cooler air potentially. And by cooler, I mean 80s or so uh, for Friday, a little bit closer to normal. And again, we'll see what this looks like at the surface. We'll see lots of reds, dark reds, and uh, even some of the purplish color moving further south across portions of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and the Mid-Atlantic. But further north in southern New England, still a hot day, but not quite as hot as it is going to be Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Friday, the current consensus is temperatures in the upper 80s or so throughout most of the day. It's a little bit of relief. Uh, not much relief overnight Friday. We'll see temperatures get down to the upper 60s once again. So again, air conditioners will still be going on Friday night. These are the current advisories from the National Weather Service in the Mount Washington area. So we can see these areas of orange here. Those are highlighted in a heat advisory. That's what the National Weather Service expects. Heat indices to rise to as high as 95 degrees. That will likely be reissued tomorrow. But I really want to point your attention here to this sort of magenta area. And this is where the National Weather Service expects the heat indices to get to as high as 105 degrees. Uh, Nashua, Concord, Manchester, Conway, uh, even portions of Maine, Augusta as well. Uh, heat indices could get to about the 105 degree mark Wednesday afternoon. And that excessive heat warning goes into effect from Wednesday around noon to about Wednesday at 8 p.m. And then we'll see even hotter conditions Thursday. So that may be extended for the following day, but we'll see what happens, of course. And so I've talked a lot about numbers, 90s, 80s, and things like that. So what do these uh, heat numbers actually mean, these temperatures? What do they do to the human body? So the National Weather Service has developed what's called the heat uh, risk. And so areas of green that you'll see coming up on a map that I'm going to show you all, uh, that's where little to no risk from or heat is expected. Uh, but we start to run into problems with major heat. This is a level of heat that's going to affect everyone without adequate cooling or hydration. And of course, this will impact health systems. We'll have a lot of calls for heat exhaustion and heat stroke and things like that. But the magenta is where it gets really bad. It's the extreme heat risk. That's where the uh, long duration heat without um, overnight cooling and relief, like we're going to see with this current uh, heat wave, will affect pretty much everyone without uh, heating or cooling. You won't need to necessarily have special health risks um, to be affected by this. And of course, Heat sensitive industries or sports and things like that uh, will be greatly affected by heat. That's where heat exhaustion and heat stroke can occur in under 15 minutes or so. So we're going to look at a map here now provided by the National Weather Service. I'll go back to the full screen and I'll get out of the presentation here for a second. So this is the forecasted uh, heat index or heat risk map, I should say, for New England. We'll focus on areas of New Hampshire and things like that. So Tuesday, the day is mostly done, but again, some areas of major heat impacts across most of the state of New Hampshire, particularly. And if you go for a little bit further west, those impacts are a little bit higher. Wednesday, we see the forecast going forward. We'll see most of New Hampshire in the uh, red area. That's major heat, and that's going to affect areas, including, it's going to affect everyone, including areas at trailheads closer to Mount Washington. Uh, Thursday is really the day I want to show you all here. This is the day where you can experience uh, some extreme heat risk across portions of central and southern New Hampshire and moving into interior Maine. We'll zoom in a little bit and look at some of the cities uh, most impacted by this extreme uh, heat outlook. Again, Manchester, Nashua, portions near or around Concord, uh, even up to Conway and moving into interior Maine. So it's just going to be a really hot day. And again, at these levels, you can see long duration extreme heat with little to overnight relief. That's going to affect everyone without effective cooling or adequate hydrations. And of course, we're likely to see, unfortunately, some health impacts for those who are unable to cool themselves sufficiently uh, going forward there. And so we'll go back to the presentation. We'll wrap things up. We'll talk about uh, what sorts of impacts people can expect from heat and how to stay safe, uh, most importantly, in these conditions. And so we'll head back to our PowerPoint here. I want to first talk about the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke. Uh, heat exhaustion, less of a medical emergency, still serious, right? So that's where a uh, person may be overheated, the body temperature has risen above. Uh, what is normal so they may experience dizziness thirst heavy sweating nausea and weakness again not quite a medical emergency but you do want to get the person to a cooler spot perhaps in the shade you want to get them hydrated uh, the more serious and absolutely life-threatening condition is heat stroke this is where your body temperature is exceeding 100 degrees this is where you want to call 911 immediately immediately move someone to a cooler area as well uh, whether it's putting ice on them getting them in the shade uh, anything does count and so this is where a person may become confused they may become dizzy or even lose consciousness in the most extreme examples. So again, uh, you want to know the difference between these two and, and just really check on your neighbors as well. Check on folks uh, who are uh, experiencing strenuous activity and going outdoors. So some key takeaways from the presentation here, 
the briefing about the heat wave, is that we're expecting an intense record-breaking heat wave this afternoon through the day on Friday. Peak heat, peak heat I should say, will be on Thursday. And the summit daily and all-time record temperatures are in jeopardy, uh, especially Wednesday and Thursday. Less of a chance Friday. And a couple of things I want to leave you all off with, uh, some safety tips, safety tips for hikers here, I should say. Uh, there's a couple of bullet points I'll, I'll touch on. Again, you want to pack extra fluids and encourage frequent hydration breaks. Avoid waiting until you're thirsty to drink because it may be uh, too late. You may already be dehydrated. Of course, this may seem like a no-brainer, but you want to avoid alcohol and sugary beverages as you're hiking. Those will quickly dehydrate you. Uh, but you also do want to stay clear of extremely cold drinks. These may cause muscle cramps uh, as well. Of course, you want to keep your pets hydrated as well as small children, especially on trail. You'll never leave pets or children unattended in parked vehicles. Of course, that's just a, a recipe for uh, some, some, serious, some serious issues. Um, you'll want to replace salts and minerals lost through heavy sweating. Uh, but to avoid all of this, you can also limit your outdoor activities in direct sunlight after cooler times of day, so in the morning and the afternoon and evening. Um, as I'm doing here, well, you'll want to wear your lightweight and uh, uh, brighter colored clothing. Uh, that will absorb less of the solar radiation and keep you less insulated, so you'll have less of a chance to actually overheat. And we'll go back to the list here. Um, you'll want to use sunscreen with SPF 15 or higher and broad spectrum protection. Again, you'll learn and watch the signs of heat exhaustion and heat stroke, as I explained a little bit earlier. Again, heat, heat exhaustion is still serious, but heat stroke is definitely a medical emergency, just a reminder there. You'll hike with others to monitor for symptoms and group members as you make your way up. And whether it's in the White Mountains or in your own backyard, you want to stay safe. And anyone who's affected by heat, you want to move them to a cool shaded area to recover. And also be aware up here in the White Mountains that the cell coverage can be quite spotty, so it may take hours for first responders to get to you should you be impacted by the heat in a significant way. So just a few reminders there as we wind up. And uh, yeah, with that, I want to thank you all for watching the uh, heat wave briefing. We'll be okay, keeping a close eye on those record high temperatures. But uh, stay safe out there over the next couple of days. And fortunately, there is relief in sight as we get into the weekend. And with that, uh, thank you all so much for watching.